Hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Alright, uh, we're moving on to the next part of your macroeconomics, going to be looking at unemployment, right? Uh, the consequences of unemployment. So likewise, like our inflation and economic growth, I've really gone through the consequences of those, uh, be it undesirable rates of inflation or undesirable rates of growth. So now we're going to be looking at what happens if we have a case of high rates of unemployment in a country. Okay? What are the consequences that it has? on your households, right, your consumers, your producers, as well as the government. So let's just jump right in. Okay, let's not waste any time. All right, so for consumers, very simple. We're always going to be looking at these few aspects. So I didn't break it up because honestly, um, there isn't really say much to explain on it. Okay, it's really up to you how do you, you want to explain it in your own terms. So I'm just going to go through essentially what are the main points, right, um, as to how different stakeholders right in the economy would actually face different repercussions as a result of high rates of unemployment so firstly on consumers definitely their purchasing power savings rate uh their level of consumption as well as their living standards is going they're all going to be affected so when there's high unemployment definitely consumer confidence will fall right it's very natural right if everyone is starting to, to get retrenched you will naturally feel that um you have a very bleak outlook towards the economy you'd be like oh no what if my job also gets uh, affected um as well as uh even for the unemployed themselves okay they are definitely going to feel uh a greater sense of bleak towards the economy so definitely the willingness of people to spend will actually decline it's a it's a domino effect when you feel as though you may lose your job then definitely you're going to want to save more money now so people are going to start building up savings and this will cause your ad to fall reason being is that there will be a fall in your level of consumption so this causes ad to fall so this can just add to unemployment as well as cause uh worsen growth okay those other factors we'll look at them in terms of impacting your other macro objectives when we look at the government as a stakeholder one more thing is that the unemployment uh, unemployed so it would see a fall or either they may not even have any income at all right especially in countries whereby there isn't a um a, a unemployment or retrenchment uh scheme for the people who are unemployed so what happens is that they may not even see any income at all for a few months or maybe even years. So this will reduce their purchasing power, leading to a fall in consumption. Likewise, hence a fall in their material standard of living. So they are not going to be able to buy as, as many goods and services that they wish to buy. They may not even be able to afford basic services and basic needs. So this will all cause their material living standards to actually fall. All right, I've already gone through what living standards are. If you are not, not sure what material aspects as well as your non-material aspects of living standards are, go and check it out. I will leave a link in the top right corner of the screen as well as in the description below. Go check those. Uh, go check that video out first. All right, when you look at producers, very simple. We're going to be looking at investments as well as their production, definitely. So these are the two main aspects you want to be looking out for. So when um when your households are affected. Okay, when I say affected households affected, it basically means those who are affected by this unemployment issue, they would definitely see a fall in income, either no income at all. So this would definitely cause a fall in consumption and hence your AD. And when this happens, it signals to the producers, right, we've learned in demand and supply, that your demand is slowing, your demand is falling. Definitely producers will cut back on their production as well in order to uh, minimize losses okay, and to ensure that they still make a decent profit. So there'll be a fall in business confidence, hence firms will hold back investment plans as well as their production, which you see in the next point. This could cause AD to fall further, hence a fall in your real GDP. Okay, alternatively, when if when you cut back on investments like we've learned before, what happens is that this can cause a fall in your long run AS. Right, we've learned this in aggregate supply. Right, when there's a fall in your long run AS, this will also lead to a fall in your um, potential growth. Right, but all in all, when you look at producers as a stakeholder we're just going to be looking at producers and their objectives which is to maximize profits um, as well as to uh, produce produce goods for society so in this case that's why we cut it here whereby i'm just going to say that they'll cut back on investments and then the next point i say there'll be a fall in productive capacity in the long run of the fall in long run as hence a fall in production so this will be where we end off when you look at producers you want to look at their goals if you want to include another point on their fall in revenue hence a fall in profits you can also do that Right, because like I said, producers we want to focus on two things. How would their supply or production be affected by this unemployment? Secondly, how would their own profits be affected by unemployment? So those would be the two main ways. Okay. On the other hand, there could also be a potential benefit. Okay, I did not write it down here, but this could be another potential benefit is that when there are high rates of unemployment, right? Likely firms they usually mirror each other, they would definitely cut back on the derived demand for labor. When they do this, what happens is that it will help them to actually cut costs 
And this could actually lead to a potential rise in profits because cost, I mean, your profits equals to total revenue minus total cost. So when there's a cut okay, in your factors of production, such as labor, um, this could actually help the firm to, to increase their overall profits, right? When they cut such costs. All right, so that could be one possible benefit, but it is very unlikely. Usually when there's unemployment, it is not a good sign for anyone. So that would be a um, just a possible scenario that could happen in the event of a uh, special case. All right, next we look at government. So governments, there's a bit more to cover. So firstly, you want to be looking at the impact that unemployment has on other macroeconomic objectives. Okay, I'm just going to go through this first. So unemployment is a waste of scarce resources whereby they are not fully utilized. Definitely, because when there's unemployment, it means that not all your workers or not all the people who have... Um, who actually own a set of skills are actually being employed to do something. So this could lead to a wastage of resources since these people aren't put to good use. So this will lead to a loss of potential output for an, uh, output for an economy. Hence, it worsens scarcity. Right? End of the day, the central problem of economics we have learned in our first ever video on economics is scarcity. So when you are wasting resources, definitely this will worsen scarcity because you are basically not making use of the resources that are already available to you, right? One more thing is that it puts a strain on government finances. So this would cause an increase in spending on unemployment benefits as well as falling tax revenues from income tax. When you've got more people who are unemployed, naturally the government, their aim is to increase society's welfare. What they will do is they will try and introduce all these unemployment benefits that hopefully aim to um, help the unemployed. But the issue is that these unemployment benefits, they don't just come freely from the sky, right? You need to actually pay for it. So in order to pay for it, you pay it using people's uh, income tax revenue, right? So tax revenue is usually what they use to fund things like public goods, fund things like unemployment benefits. But this tax revenue comes from somewhere. So you have to be able to tax someone in order to get this tax revenue, which means that you're going to be taxing people such as your middle income, your higher income, possibly even the lower income as well. But with unemployment, it means that more people actually are going without an income. So definitely your tax revenue will fall, which is why it's kind of like a domino effect. The government will not be able to supplement as much unemployment benefits because to begin with, they can't even tax people as much as they could before. So there is just one point to consider. And so essentially, this comes at the expense of the government expenditure in other areas. Okay, this will lead to a rise in the opportunity caused by the government. Okay, one more thing is that unemployment signals a fall in income, so hence the fall in purchasing power of consumers, definitely. So the fall in consumption of foreign imported goods will also be apparent because when people do not have money, they cannot spend it on foreign goods. So if you look at a country like Singapore, definitely there are almost everything is imported, lah, basically. So definitely when your income falls, you're not going to be able to afford these imported goods. So this could lead to a fall in your import expenditure. Right, that means the imported goods that are coming in, the demand is going to fall. It will lead to a fall in the value of imports. But this is a good thing because it will lead to a stronger or healthier balance of payment provided that your exports are still relatively higher than the imports. We'll learn in balance of payments um, um, very, very soon Okay, in, in the next few parts what balance of payments are. But essentially, in order for it to be a healthy balance of payments uh, in your current account especially, there should be a rise in exports more than um, imports or either that there should be a fall in imports that will help to strengthen your balance of payments uh, position. So this could be one good thing. Uh, just take note of it first. When, you, when I go through balance of payments, you will get a clearer understanding of what it is. But this is actually a good thing that unemployment can actually bring about. So you realize that unemployment does not always lead to negatives. They could also potentially lead to certain benefits as well. Alright, one more thing would be impacts on other societal issues. So this is looking at um, beyond economics, right? When you're looking at um, society as a whole, what are the impacts that unemployment can have that now the government is going to have to struggle to manage? So firstly, um, rising unemployment leads to social deprivation. It could lead to increased crime, divorce rates, and it could affect um, non-material SOL, definitely, right? When there's increased crime, you don't feel as safe. When there are increased divorce rates, your level of happiness is going to fall. These are all non-material living standard aspects. One more thing is that it could worsen income inequality. Usually when unemployment happens on a massive scale, it tends to affect the lower and the middle income. However, the richer income may not actually be affected as much, meaning to say that they are just going to get richer or the poor without an income, without a job, 
are just going to get poorer. So this would actually widen the income inequality gap, which is actually very, very detrimental to a society, right? If you notice, Singapore has a huge issue with this um, whole income inequality issue, and it's very, very hard to resolve. So this is one huge, huge detrimental impact that unemployment can have. Because usually the richer income, they know where to park their money. They know how to strategize, be it um, during a recession or when there's high unemployment rates. So you will have to always look out for your lower and middle income, right? This can actually cause a greater divide between the two income groups. All right, this can also lead to social and political unrest, which actually destabilizes the economy and deters foreign investment. So this is negative in the long run. What happens is that when there is a lot of unemployment, naturally other foreign firms, they'll be like, oh, then why should we park our firm here, right? If they, I'm not going to be able to employ anyone and um, people seem to be getting retrenched. So it's just going to cause a greater cost to me. So this could actually in the long run deter foreign firms from coming to the country to invest. Uh, but this is more of a long run impact that we don't really see in the short run uh, because usually most foreign firms will already have their um, firms parked in a certain country and they may choose to withdraw if it gets really, really bad or they may actually stay if they can survive the this unemployment type right so this could be one more issue that can actually happen so all in all your exam requirements for this chapter is very simple just be able to explain and discuss the consequences of unemployment so i've gone through so if you want you can always go based on stakeholder um, i think that's the easiest way to explain it and discuss and then explain the impacts which unemployment may have on other economic goals i will do a few videos okay, on how to link all your economic goals together very very soon uh, but essentially like I've already gone through in my on the slide right of the governments and the impact on other macro objectives that is roughly how you should be looking at okay whether unemployment can lead to a more favorable balance of payments position or whether it worsens the balance of payment or whether it has any impact on your inflation on economic growth okay these are the things that you want to be looking at so overall, I think it's a very, very simple part. I think it's the easiest out of all, um, this unemployment consequences, because it's very, very straightforward. Always look for uh, living standards when it comes to consumers, look for production and profits when it comes to producers, and look for other goals when it comes to your governments. That is how you will be able to nail this chapter down very, very easily and um, really scale down your learning so that you know what you should be segregating what into what. So if not, uh, that's all I have for this video. Okay, I think it's a very short one, I, I believe. Uh, and I hope it has been quite insightful. If you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comment section down below. I will answer them. You guys already know the drill. So uh, go ahead and leave this video a like as well as to subscribe if you did learn something. Um, it really, really does help me out a lot. I know that's everyone. That, I mean, that is what everyone says, but it actually does help us out a lot. <laughs> so go ahead and do that if, if you could. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon most probably in the next two days. All right, if not, keep studying hard and have a good one. Bye-bye.